Imagine a computer so powerful it could process information faster than a blink of an eye. Welcome to the world of quantum computing, a realm where the traditional rules of computing are turned on their head and the impossible becomes possible. This revolutionary technology has the potential to reshape our understanding of information processing, pushing the boundaries of what we believe to be achievable. Quantum computing is not just another step on the technological ladder. It's an extraordinary leap into the future. It promises to solve complex problems that are currently beyond the reach of even the most advanced supercomputers. From modeling intricate biological systems to cracking the most formidable cryptographic codes, the potential applications are as exciting as they are vast. But what makes quantum computing so radically different from classical computing? Well, traditional computers, the ones that you and I use every day, operate using bits. These bits can either be a zero or a one, representing off or on states. This binary system is at the heart of all classical computing. Quantum computers, on the other hand, rely on quantum bits or qubits. Unlike classical bits, qubits can exist in multiple states at once, thanks to a quantum phenomenon known as superposition. This means a qubit can be a zero, a one, or both at the same time. This unique property allows quantum computers to process a vast amount of information simultaneously, making them exponentially faster and more powerful than their classical counterparts. But it's not just about speed. Quantum computers also bring a whole new dimension to processing power. They can solve problems in a fundamentally different way, opening up new avenues for research and innovation. But how does a quantum computer achieve this feat? Stay tuned to unravel the mystery behind quantum computing. Unlike the classical computers that use bits, quantum computers use something known as qubits. Now you might be wondering, what exactly is a qubit? Well, let's dive into it. A qubit, short for quantum bit, is the fundamental unit of quantum information. Similar to how a bit is the basic unit of information in a classical computer, a qubit is the equivalent in a quantum computer. But here's where it gets intriguing. While a bit can only be in one of two states, zero or one, a qubit can be in multiple states at once, thanks to a concept known as superposition. Superposition is a principle of quantum mechanics that allows particles to exist in multiple states at once until measured. In terms of a qubit, it means that it can be in a state of zero, one, or both at the same time. Mind-boggling, isn't it? But wait, there's more. Qubits can also be entangled. Another fascinating quantum concept. When qubits become entangled, the state of one qubit becomes directly linked to the state of another, no matter how far apart they are. This means that the state of one qubit can instantaneously affect the state of the other, defying the traditional laws of space and time. Now, why are these properties so powerful? They allow quantum computers to process a massive amount of information at once. Imagine being able to read every book in a library at the same time, instead of one by one. That's the kind of speed and efficiency we're talking about here. Qubits give quantum computers the ability to solve complex problems that would take classical computers millions of years to crack. They are the heart of quantum computing, pumping the power of superposition and entanglement into every calculation. Now that we have a basic understanding of qubits, let's delve deeper into the working of a quantum computer. Just like the logic gates in classical computers, quantum computers have quantum gates. Now, if you're familiar with classical computing, you know that logic gates are the building blocks. They control the flow of information by performing basic operations such as AND, Oregon and NOT on binary data. In the quantum realm, we have an equivalent, quantum gates. But these aren't your run-of-the-mill gates. They perform operations on qubits, the fundamental units of quantum information. Quantum gates manipulate qubits in fascinating ways enabling the extraordinary power of quantum computing. They can modify a qubit state, perform computations, and even entangle two qubits, a unique quantum phenomenon where the state of one qubit becomes linked to the state of another, no matter how far apart they may be. This entanglement is a cornerstone of quantum computing, enabling it to perform complex calculations at a speed that leaves classical computers in the dust. And just like their classical counterparts, we have a variety of quantum gates, each with its unique properties and functions. For instance, the Pauli X gate, 
often compared to a classical not gate, flips a qubit state from zero to one and vice versa. Similarly, we have the Hadamard gate, a real game changer in quantum computing. It takes a qubit in a definite state and puts it into a superposition of states, allowing it to exist in multiple states at once. This superposition is another key quantum concept that allows quantum computers to perform multiple calculations simultaneously. Other common quantum gates include the phase gate, the P8 gate and the CNOT gate. Each of these gates transforms qubits in different ways, enabling a vast array of computations. It's like having a toolbox, but instead of hammers and wrenches, these tools can manipulate the very fabric of reality. Quantum gates indeed play a crucial role in the functioning of a quantum computer. But how does all this come together? Well, that's a story for the next scene. So stick around as we delve deeper into the world of quantum computing. Quantum computers derive their power from something called quantum algorithms. These algorithms are the magic spells in the world of quantum computing enabling these machines to perform complex calculations at a speed that's simply unattainable by their classical counterparts. But what are quantum algorithms, really? Well, they are a set of instructions designed specifically for quantum computers. These instructions guide the qubits, the basic units of quantum information, to interact in ways that leverage quantum phenomena like superposition and entanglement. Let's break it down a bit. Remember how we talked about qubits being in a state of superposition, meaning they can be in multiple states at once? This allows quantum algorithms to perform many calculations simultaneously. And the entanglement, it ensures that each of these calculations doesn't exist in isolation, but is connected to the others in a way that can help solve complex problems. Now let's touch on some popular quantum algorithms. First up is Shor's algorithm. It's a big deal because it can factor large numbers into primes much faster than any known classical algorithm. This has significant implications for cryptography, as it could potentially crack many of the encryption systems we currently rely on. Another important quantum algorithm is Grover's algorithm. It's designed to search unstructured databases, and it can do this much faster than any classical algorithm. This has potential applications in a wide range of fields, from drug discovery to financial modelling. Lastly, there's the quantum Fourier transform. It's a key component in many quantum algorithms, including Shor's, and is used to extract useful information from a quantum system. These algorithms, and others like them, are what give quantum computers their extraordinary power. They harness the weirdness of the quantum world to solve problems that are currently beyond the reach of classical computers. Indeed, quantum algorithms are the powerhouse of quantum computing. But what's next in the quantum world? The world of quantum computing is evolving at an unprecedented pace. Today, we stand at an exciting juncture where we've moved from theoretical models to actual quantum machines. Yet the road ahead is filled with challenges. Quantum computers are still fragile and require extreme conditions to function. Their error rates are high and building a universal quantum computer is a daunting task. But let's not forget that every technological breakthrough in history was once considered impossible. Quantum computing is no different. Scientists are tirelessly working to overcome these hurdles and their efforts are already bearing fruit. 